what the Lord has pressed in my spirit. And this is for the body of Christ everywhere to remind his people, including his preachers. And this message is for everyone from the pulpit on down. Just a constant reminder, just a reminder, because sometimes we forget that we are God's children. And the title is called, We Are Not Free Agents. You're not a free agent. To just do what you want, say what you want, go where you want, do what you want, and think there are not consequences to pay from heaven. When, you, when you're a child of God and you do what you want, say what you want, and act like you want, and don't and disregard the word of God, then there are consequences coming down from above from the Lord Almighty. So this is just a reminder to remind us that we are not free agents. We are servants and we are stewards. Of the Lord Jesus. We are servants and stewards. What is a free agent? A free agent is a person who does not have any commitments or restrictions on their actions. When you sign a contract to work for a sports team, you have to do that contract. Once that contract is over, you are free and you don't have any commitments or nothing that restricts your action. But well, God said he wanted me to use that same scenario in the body of Christ. Right. You signed the contract. We signed the contract. Right. And that contract was signed with Jesus' blood. Whosoever call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's right. And from the moment we call on the name of the Lord with a sincere heart and believe in our heart that God had raised him from the dead, mm -hmm. we were baptized into his body and he came to live in us. He gave the Holy Spirit to live in us. Know you not that you are the temple of God and that the Holy Spirit lives in you. Amen. You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Amen. And that price was the precious blood of Jesus. Right. And I'm going to show you later on during the lesson that Christ did not redeem us with corruptible things no, like silver and gold. No. He purchased us with his own blood. Amen. So we are not free agents. Christians all over the world, you are not a free agent. Amen. To do what you want, Say what you want and live how you want. You belong to God if you are born again. Amen. This is not done to, me, to condemn you. This is something just to encourage you, remind you that God is depending on us. Amen. We are not free agents. We have commitments and our actions have been restricted. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Be ye this followers of me as I follow Christ. Jesus said, take up your cross daily and follow me. No man that put his hand to the plow and look back. It look like that's some restriction to me. Let your speech be full of grace and seasoned with salt. You mean I can't say what I, you, I want to say? Let your speech be full of grace and seasoned with salt. Love your enemies. You know I can't take revenge on my enemies? Love your enemies and pray for them. That's precisely cast your name out as evil. Walk in love. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's right. Love thy neighbor as you love your what? Look like that's some restrictions. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down, shaking together. Mm -hmm. Study to show yourself approved unto God. That's right. For God forgave us our trespasses. We ought to give men their what? Look like that's some restrictions, but some good restrictions. Right. To keep you what? Holy. Mm -hmm. We are Christians. God's peculiar people. The children of the Most High God, the Father and Maker, sustain of all things. We His children, we His offspring, right. and we're not free agents. We can't do like the world and be like the world. Right. We're supposed to live in the world, but not be a part of the world and this system and the way it think. That's what He's talking about. He know we got to live in the world. We got to breathe the air. We got to eat the food. Right. But He's talking about don't think like the world. Don't handle your affairs like the world, because right. you're not a free agent. At the end of that contract, that, that football player, that basketball player could do whatever they want to do and look for another team that will take them on. But God said, you can't look, look to them and say, you can't look for another team on this one. <laughs> you with this team for life. You ain't no free agent. And that's where Christians get in trouble. They party with them and then want to play with them. Look to them and say, not a Holy Ghost stepping in now. You can't party with them and expect they're going to pray with you. 
You got to be ye separate. That's why Jesus could go and preach anywhere because everywhere he went, he was blameless. See, when you party, just don't party with sinners. Party with other Christians. And ain't that God don't want you to have a good time, but you can't witness to the lost when you partying and drinking with them. And it's not a sin to drink. He said the pastors can't have nothing. They can yeah. have a little bit and everybody else just be sober. But you can't party with the people you're supposed to be delivering. Yeah. And see, we want to talk about different nationalities of people and different people sin, but we party with it. We condone what they do on one hand, and then we want to rebuke on the other hand. You ain't no free agent to do that. You have your life have restrictions. Right. Even your words have restrictions. The Bible says a soft answer, turn away anger. We talk to people like they dogs. And then want to apologize. You done already killed them with your words. A soft answer turns away anger. Just when you sometimes when you just know how to talk to folk, you can get stuff out of I called a piece of her people last night and wanted to order me some wings. And the young man answered the phone. Sound like he didn't know his left hand from his right hand. I'm answering questions. He's and he's asking me questions. I'm asking questions because I want to buy something. But he asking me questions. He never answered what I'm asking. Now he don't know how to call several times and order from the same store. If he pull my number, if it's in the system, they even know my name. And he said, I wanted to order me some boneless wings. He said, they don't deliver boneless wings. So I said, do the wings have to have bone for me to get some then? Mm -hmm. He said, well, they don't deliver them. They fit the center piece. I said, what is this boy on? <laughs> <laughs> if you don't deliver boneless wings, what do you deliver the wings that got a bone? He said, they fit the center piece. They don't deliver them. What? Can you give me somebody, sir, please, that I can talk to? Yes, so the lady got on the phone. And say, how may I say, who was that? And why is he answering the phone? Oh, we just told him to pick up the phone to keep the phone from ringing. I say, but he can't take an order, ma'am. But I didn't say it in a nasty tone. I said, well, okay, well, I'm ready to order if you can take my order. First of all, do y'all deliver wings that don't have a bone? She said, yes, we do. I said, well, I would like to order some wings, please. And I want them spitting my food. Nah, 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 that's right. Put poison in my food. Right. Right. You're going to talk crazy to people and still expect a positive response? God said that's not the Christian way. Right. And I got my order and it came quicker than what they said. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Hey, he just shouldn't have been answering the phone because he don't know what he's doing. That's right. Right. I just asked him, who was he? She said, well, he, we just asked him to pick up the line because all the lines were ringing. But I could have got crazy. Mm -hmm. But that's not the Christian way. A soft answer. Mm -hmm. Watch this. God has pressed in my heart to remind us, not you, us, that Jesus redeemed us with his own blood. Mm -hmm. Somebody paid for you to say that you're a Christian. Right. And I don't know why people don't want to be associated with the name Christian anymore. Right. Because so many Christians have done evil things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and people hate to hear that word Christian. Mm -hmm. But those were not real Christians. No. Just like I can tell y'all, I'm Michael Jordan. I'm Michael Jordan. Right. You're going to know I'm not when I get on the court. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. So many people have done things in the name of the Lord and they blinded those that don't know the Lord. Right. Because real Christians don't operate in hate. Amen. Real Christians don't operate in evil. Right. Real Christians operate in love. Amen. But God has pressed my heart to remind us that Jesus redeemed us with his own blood. We were bought with a price, and that price was his life. He paid for us with his life Amen. and the shedding of his blood. We are not free agents who can do what we want, say what we want, go where we want, and live how we want, and expect God to be pleased with us. Right. Now, you can do it, but God won't be pleased with you. Because he won't be able to fill his will through you right. or through us. We're supposed to not be indulging, not be entertaining, but witnessing to. 
and reaching out to them. But time, a lot of times God sent us on mission and we cut off the mission and we start indulging. And then we try to go back to mission and you can't. Mm -hmm. You can go mission at a new place, but you can't go to that place where you already corrupt your name. And corrupting your name don't mean you sin. It's just that you didn't do what you were supposed to do. Now they can't look to you as the light or as the messenger or as the deliverer. Because you do what I do. That's what they're going to say. Matter of fact, you do more than what I do when we're together. And God say, you're not a free agent. That's all I want to remind you. You're not. I'm going to forgive you. I'm going to restore you. But you are different and you got to act different. Now, if you're not going to, if you never plan on witnessing these people and all that kind of stuff, then I guess you do what you want to do. But if you plan on witnessing, because I want to be able to go wherever God want to send me to whoever. So I got to live. And sometimes I'm going to tell you this here. The Christian life is not a boring life, but it is a lonely life. Don't let nobody fool you now. I know they try to get the all hyped in the church and talk about we pray over here, we pray in the Lord, but we by ourselves sometimes you lonely. That's why the Holy Spirit gotta encourage you because you working for Jesus. You don't see Jesus going nowhere in the Bible and praising the Lord. Mm -hmm. Show me a scripture where Jesus was praising. He glorified God many times, but I'm talking about praising the Lord like we praise the Lord. It wasn't nothing to praise about. I come here to die. Mm -hmm. I'm not excited about death. But he always glorified God by doing what the Father wanted him to do. Then God got the glory from him. Amen. See, we so busy want to praise God and praise him only for a moment. But glorifying is better when God said, this is a vessel that I'm going to use today, tomorrow, and eternally. Then I get the glory and we come up to his altar as a sweet smelling savor because God is being glorified through our life and through our acts, through our words. You supposed to be over there praying, people. You over there. It's a time for that, but you see, you're on a mission. And when you're on a mission, you cannot indulge. You got too many people indulging and forsaking their ministry. They call them. And your calling may not be in the poor people, but God sent you. You see, you think with all this knowledge you got, that God sending you out there to have a good time? It's sin and death all around you. And God wants you to be on standby so when I press in your heart to do it, to witness, to say something, you can do it and be blameless. You can't be blameless if your hand's dirty. When I was at Trinity Missionary Baptist Church, uh, one of the guys that was on trial to be a deacon told me, he told his grandkids to go in the kitchen and get two cookies. And he came in there and showed them, said, Papa, I got two cookies. He said, well, what's that behind your back? He had an extra cookie. <laughs> See, he didn't obey. He did what he took the two and he took an extra one. But Papa told him to just get two. But see, that's how we are. We, God sent us to do stuff we do what he tells us to do, but we do other things also, and we think we obey God. You didn't obey God. Because right. you got something out of it. When you obey God, there's nothing in it for you, but everything in it for him. Right. Look at your name and say, you're going to have to close on this one. I'm going to have to close on this one. I'm going to have to let this. See, you got, see, you got to let this marinate. Because you ain't no free agent. I'm enslaved to him in a sense, in a sense. When I took on his name and took on that blood, that's when the shackles got on me. I got free from Satan, but enslaved to him and his will. I'm a servant of the most high God. And I'm a son. And you a daughter. Because the servant don't abide in the house forever. The servant, when it's time to go to bed, he go out to the barn. Mm -hmm. But the children sleep in the castle. Mm -hmm. We servants, daughters, and sons. Mm -hmm. From henceforth, I call you not sir, I call you my friends. Uh -huh. And everything God revealed to the Father, he revealed to us. So I want to show you in the scripture that Jesus paid for us with his blood. He didn't, he didn't use corruptible things. He didn't purchase us back with things that were tarnished or things that would fade away, but with his blood. First Peter chapter one. Mm -hmm. 
when you find it, say, bless his name. First Peter chapter 1. Verse 18. I want to show you that he redeemed us with his blood. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. When someone died on your behalf, that is the best thing one could do. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, greater love had no man than this that a man laid on his life and he called us friends. Amen. First Peter chapter 1 verse 18 when you find the blessed name. Yes. He says, for much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the tradition from your fathers. See, they was teaching that Jesus purchased them, but it wasn't that with his blood, but with silver and gold and all these other kind of things. It's like a lot of churches today try to use things because they have a lot of revenue. They can do a lot of stuff that can attract a lot of people. So they have a lot of amenities. And so it attracts people because they have a daycare. They got tablets in it for the children on the ABCs. Yeah. Not paper books, mm -hmm. but tablets. Mm -hmm. And they kick a hot breakfast at the daycare. And your kid could come, he got his own mat, his own little blanket. On little thing to sleep on. They got their own little diaper bag. Because mm -hmm. somebody sponsored all that. And so they have a lot of men. So a lot of people say, well, I can go there because my kid go to daycare. And I can go to church. And I like to worry about my baby. Because they're going to take them on field trips and all that. And they don't worry about if you left your checkbook. They got a credit. I mean, they got an uh, ATM machine in the lobby. <laughs> so if you forgot your cash, you could go withdraw something. And Yep. You know, and if, if you don't want to do that, you can go on the website on your phone while you sit there in service and donate to the website. And they got a lot of amenities. And people say, well, this church is convenient. Right. So I think I'll go over here because, and you know, they even got for the seniors, they even have a, a, what, they, what they call when they, somebody park, valley parking in. <laughs> and even covered parking for some. And a lot of amenities. Mm -hmm. That ain't why you should be at the church. Mm -hmm. nope. Huh? Nope. He said, but look at verse 19. But with the precious blood, call that blood precious, mm -hmm. of Christ as of a lamb without blemish, without spot. Mm -hmm. That's what he redeemed us with. Mm -hmm. His blood. And if I pay for you with my life, you are not a free agent. To do what you want, say what you want, go where you want, and live how you want, and not expect consequences to come down from heaven from the most high God. Mm -hmm. And what God gonna do when we do what we want, say what we want, live how we want, act like we want, you know what God gonna do? He ain't gonna cast you out. He gonna chase you. Mm -hmm. Chasing me, he whoop you just enough to get you back in line. Mm -hmm. He don't child abuse us. <laughs> he whoop us just enough. And if he see that the whipping is working, mm -hmm. when you do it again, guess what? He going to quickly chase you. Because he see that that's what works for you. Mm -hmm. But if he whoop you and he see that the whipping is not working, he not going to whip you no more. Mm -hmm. You know why? Guess what? I'm going to tell you a secret. Because you're a bastard. Mm -hmm. You ain't his child. Mm -hmm. He not going to whoop children that ain't his. Mm -hmm. But now if you obey when he chases you, you his child. Right. But who, you go home and whoop your neighbor's kid for looking out the <laughs> living room window. And you watch some CPS people come over and say, why are you whooping this boy? Uh -huh. But if it's your child and you told him not to be looking out the living room window, you, CPS can't do nothing as long as you didn't overdo it. Yeah, right. But you can't whoop your straight, your neighbor's kid under no circumstance. Uh -huh. You can't put your hands on That's t contact by assault. Right. So God not going to whoop children or chasing children that's not his. Because those children that are not his, guess what? Are free agents. But you are not a free agent. We are not a free agent. To do what we want, say what we want, live how we want, and think consequences won't come down from heaven. It's just a reminder. Look to your name and say, you finna close. 
You were bought with a price I just showed you, and now your body belongs to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Yes. We're going to look at this one scripture, and we're going to finish lesson number 2. If the Lord willing, you don't come back before then, mm -hmm. on next Sunday. This is a simple lesson, but I know you understand it because I'm understanding it. Because the lesson was for me too, not just y'all. You a Christian 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It ain't no time. You don't have, we don't have a time to take a break. You think God moved by these traditional men, these holidays? God ain't moved by holidays. He moved by holy days. Every day is holy to the Lord. You can worship God every day if you want to. Sunday, we just expect to see you. But if you want to worship every day, you can do it every day. First Corinthians chapter 6, look at verse 15 when you finally say, Bless his name. Look what it says. Know ye not that your bodies are what? Members of Christ. Shall I then take members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? God forbid. He's just using a harlot, for example. In other words, he said, Shall I take my body, which is a member of Christ, and live in sin? Mm -hmm. Now look at verse 19 and 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is what? Right. In you, which you have of what? The Holy Spirit is in you. I don't care how you feel. If you're born again, Holy Ghost in you. Mm -hmm. Verse 20. For you were bought with a price. Therefore, that got that word glorified. Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are what? That's what God wants. He wants to be glorified from our actions, from our behavior, from our speech, and how we live. When he is glorified from that, the sky's the limit for you. Because he knows that as long as he give it to you, he's going to be glorified through it. He don't mind you having it. But when we live like we free agents, God gonna first thing he's going to do is trying to get our attention. He's going to chase us in love. Just like a father deal with his children. That's how he's going to deal with us. He's going in love. He's going to chase us. And if he see that the chasing is working, when we get out of line, he'll chase us again. But if he see that the chasing is not working, he will not chase you because you ain't none of his child. So we are not free agents. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise.